Hello, this is Professor Kyle Mack, and you are watching 13-1 Lesson Intro in 5 Minutes or Less. The major concepts that will be covered in this section are transformations, translations, and rotations. Transformations are the moving or manipulation of a point or a set of points while still maintaining shape, angles, and sometimes size. When we actually maintain the size, then that's a special type of transformation called an isometry. There are three types of isometries or three types of transformations that maintain size. The first is translation, which in elementary and middle school classrooms we typically call a slide, a rotation, which is typically called a turn, and a reflection, which is typically called a flip. Now there is a fourth type of transformation, but it does not maintain size. That's called a dilation or a size transformation. And in most classrooms in the early education setting, you're gonna call that a grow or a shrink. Um, a great resource to look at is Math is Fun. I have that link down below in this document. All right, now we're gonna look at two isometries in this lesson. The first is translation. So a translation is the motion of a plane that moves every point of the plane a specified distance in a specified direction along a straight line. And so if we think of a translation in terms of a slide, as we previously discussed, think of a child at the top of a slide, and then they're going to slide down, and then you take a picture of them at the bottom of the slide. And let's say you overlap those two pictures. What you're going to have is you're going to have the pre-image of the child at the top, and then a new image of the child at the bottom. You'll notice that they are still congruent, and that if you took any two points and then drew a line through them, so if I took the shoulder and drew a line, and then the shoulder here and drew a line, those would actually be parallel lines. So translations create parallel lines. Now, a translation can also be shown using just an arrow for direction. And that arrow is going to have both a vertical and a horizontal motion to it. The vertical motion from x to x prime is down two. The horizontal is to the right two. And so if we do that to both a and B of the line segment AB that's shown, what you'll see is that you'll get A prime B prime, which are each two down and two to the right from their original image. We can also use this in coordinate geometry where we can have translation uh, notation. And so if I take this notation up here, basically what's happening with this plus minus A is we're taking the X value and then adding or subtracting A to manipulate it for a left right motion. And the same thing happens with y, but it's going to be an up-down motion. So if we take the figure here, where the green is the original and the pink is the new, you'll see that the object goes to the right five places and then goes down two places. And so how we show that is a plus five for the right five and then a minus two for the down two. And we can do that for each point, a, b, and c, to get a prime b prime c prime, which will then give us a congruent figure in a new location based upon the translation. Finally, we have rotations. A rotation is a transformation of the plane determined by holding one point, which we call the center, fixed, and then rotating that object that's within the plane about this point by a certain amount in a certain direction. And so a rotation first has got to have a center. Now that center can be on the figure, it can be inside of the figure, or it can be outside of the figure. And so um, the centers can be anywhere, but you need to know where they are. The next thing is, is that you're going to rotate, and if you're not given a direction of rotation, then you automatically assume clockwise. Otherwise, they'll tell you clockwise or counterclockwise. And then the rotation itself is typically measured in degrees. And so if you have a 90 degree rotation that is clockwise, you'll start here and you'll rotate down to now the new image is at a 90 degree orientation to the original. And oftentimes I suggest, especially for those who have a hard time visualizing, so if you don't see how this object rotates 90 degrees counterclockwise to make this new image, oftentimes by connecting a line segment between the center and the original point, and then drawing out to find the new point, that can really help people to determine how the 90 degree counterclockwise rotation has occurred in that figure. That concludes this lesson intro in five minutes or less.